Hello there. Thanks for joining us again today on Doctor Teach Me to Parent. You know, this has been a program over the years to bring to you some of the unique aspects of parenting so that you become not only a better parent, but that you enjoy the process of parenting and that you become engaged in the process of parenting in a way that you benefit as a parent, as your kids benefit as part of your family life. So we've tried to bring that together in a lot of different ways. We're going to do it again today. We're going to do it through art and through photography. The place of photography in a family. Do you as a family, your children, and the opportunities for photography and even encourage a career in photography? We're going to look at that idea and what role does photography play in your life as a family and how do you make photography make your family a better family, a higher quality of family? Do you bring art into your family life? Do you bring photography into your family life so that you become a, um, a higher quality family that enjoys more than just obviously to the issue of photography. So anyway, thanks for joining me today. And uh, to put it in perspective what we're going to talk about today, let me just give you a quote like I do every week. And um, this will kind of be our, our kickoff, if you will. Photography is a way to share your joy, but it takes two to be glad, or it takes two to be happy, or it takes two to enjoy, or to interact, and to appreciate the art itself. So to help us today, we're two of us. We have Paul Mullins, who is a local commercial artist and through photography and uh, has made his life in photography and is probably the key photographer in our particular city. And Paul Mullins is going to share his views of photography and how that has impacted him and his family. And of course, how he can help you bring photography into your family and make it a well, a well worthwhile activity and event and something that you enjoy, you know, together. So, Paul, thanks for joining us and welcome. Well, thank you for having me. This is going to be a good little discussion. It's good to see you. <laughs> As we unfold this whole area of, I, I, I use the word art and photography interchangeably. Yeah. Am I right on that? Yes. It's a way of expressing ourselves like your quote. You yeah. have an audience and you have a speaker. It's communication, listening and, and speaking. So it's all art. Yeah. But photography is kind of one form of it, or one aspect of it, or yeah, it's, it's maybe uh, it's preferred by by some people as compared to something else. Yeah, any art has to have a point. You have to have a point of view. If you want to express something about your worldview or yourself, or you know, communicating an idea, an emotion. So it's it's an art form. Yeah, give me a minute on just how you got into photography. Wow. There's got to be a long path, and it could be a long story. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll tell but you. But what's the essence of how you open the door of photography and walk into it? Well, i got to go back to my childhood. My mom was an art teacher, also a music teacher. That helps. Yeah, and I have a twin brother. Yeah. My twin went into music, and I went into the visual arts. So I uh, yeah. always loved it. I ended up, uh, you know taking lessons from my mom, actually. Dad was the photographer in the family, but he wasn't very oh. good. I mean, he, he was okay. You know, he was, the, he was the dedicated photographer for the family, but it wasn't until later after I got into uh, the graphic design business, um, I had been working as an art director and hiring photographers to do my projects. Sure. Yeah, so that's when I saw Oh, I like what I love that part of it. I so when you have that. a family history, yeah, that's engaged in art in a variety of different ways. Oh yeah, it, it kind of all comes together. Yeah, we had mom was she loved little things. She was an observer, an explorer. She observed the simple things in life. Like I couldn't believe how many times on a vacation we'd stop along the side of the road for her to pick a little wildflower or something. You know, <laughs> oh, dad. Stop. <laughs> but well, it's it was an a way of a way of seeing of the environment, appreciation of the world in which you live. Yeah, she loved the little things and seeing the world and all these camping experiences as a kid. The outdoors yeah. has led me to where I, I just love exploring, discovering, seeing things visually. It's very exciting to me. You know, it's, it's an interesting point because 
the world is is very interesting to explore. I mean, there's huge amounts of opportunity. Oh yeah. But why take a picture of it? Yeah, because it's something that means something to me, and I want to share that with you. Uh huh. You know, um, in the family, I mean, you can start out by just saying, "Let's do a little project. What makes you happy?" Let's take some pictures of the thing you would love to do the most or mm-hmm. could do more of. Mm-hmm. And then you can share those things with me. Just like you're sharing on the screen here. Yeah. I mean, it might be, as a kid, it might be sports. Mm-hmm. Um, it might be your pet. It might be uh, your classmates. Yeah. Um, so what, everybody's different, so it doesn't necessarily have to be one thing. And so having that... Um, project for the family yeah. gives you a way to talk about yeah. what you really are about. Have you done landscaping, uh, art, uh, photography primarily? Uh, yeah. I yeah. Mean, is, um, is, is landscaping something that people really relate to and bring well, into their life and bring into their home and put on the wall? I mean, is it? Yeah, it's, it's a passion of mine. Um, you know, it's uh, it's like well, the landscape is all about glory. It's seeing the creator. It's seeing his power. And it's seeing his wisdom in his visual creativity. Uh, it's like walking and browsing a, a one-man gallery huh. in nature. Huh, that's interesting. I, I mean, he really yeah. is. So what I'm doing is kind of reproducing, in a sense, what he's done. Uh-huh. I mean, he's the original creator artist. So and it's kind of reaching out and grabbing it and, yeah, and I mean, participating in it and holding it. Yes. Seeing that glory is very exciting. And then being able to share it with other people. That's really what drives me in landscape photography. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, so I've been I've doing... I've always said that art that I like and I look at a piece of photography and yeah, I pass on it and others you know, I'm attracted to. I've always said that it's when a piece of art and a piece of photography matches some experience that I've had. I put those two together. That art I want to have. That you're, art I want to have on my wall. You're that connecting. art I want to buy. Yeah, you're connecting with it. Because it I'm speaks, connecting with it. It speaks to you. It, 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 it resonates. It, it reflects an experience I've had or mm-hmm. reflects a thought or an emotion. Yeah. Uh, or sometimes an experience. So, and, but if it doesn't connect with me that way, it's, it's of no interest. Yeah. I pass on it. Yeah. Everybody has. I mean, is that a, is that a common experience? Is that yes. true? Yes. I mean, like, if I'm selling a landscape photograph to someone um, who grew up in Yosemite. Yes, yes. And worked there. Yes. Um, she wanted that image that reminded her of those experiences of her time there. Yeah, it'll be a, a lifetime gift or you yeah if you visit a place a special place and it it brings a memory so now there are so many everybody is a photographer if they have a phone i mean you can capture pictures incredibly with phones Mm -hmm. and um you don't have to know a lot of technical things about it but you can express yourself and share these ideas with each other just by using your phone is it true that a cell phone camera is quality enough for almost most people? Unless you're oh, yeah. really going to make a career out of it or you're going to oh, yeah. you know, go to a higher level, then, of course, that would not work at all. But, uh, I mean, is there a point in time in which you move from one to another? Yeah, I mean, if you're getting serious about it, yeah. Mm-hmm. But the phone will do a lot. I mean, I've seen some images from my phone that, look better than from my other camera <laughs> is that <laughs> and because it's all I, I usually shoot all manually and I take my time I slow down really play ask questions what happens if I do this with a phone I'm uh, pretty much takes care of itself yeah it's all automatic uh-huh. um, and it can see good and lo- I mean it takes pictures well in low light and would that be a kind of a a way for somebody to test out whether this is oh, really yeah. a interest of theirs or a, a potential career or a potential yes. source of a income, a hobby. 
Yeah. Just start with your cell phone. Yeah. Yeah. And then what do you do? What do you add to that? I mean, it's got to be oh, more than e- that. Equipment-wise? Yeah, and experience. Where do you go? What do you? How yeah. do you test out whether you have kind of an, an ability in the area of photography art? Well, it's, I think from getting feedback from people that you share it with. Oh, you know, uh-huh. what do they feel about it? And yeah. you got to you got to have someone that you respect give you the the critique. You don't want to just say, "Oh, that's a great image." Yeah. And that's the end of it. But why or is it someone you respect in the field giving mm-hmm. you a critique? You can always go to school to take photography. There's plenty of stuff online, you, you know, the education you can get online is amazing. Um there's so many places, but to be affirmed in whether you have the talent or not, I think it's a response from the people and how you feel about it yourself. So really, it's, it's sharing mm-hmm. your work, your, your product, your, the pictures you've taken. Yeah. But it's not just sharing it, but it's sharing it with people who have wisdom or have experience or have a perception right. of, of art or of design or whatever. Yeah, I mean, that you're... I've taken a lot of images that are not very good. But well, I'm, I'm sure <laughs> I'm not afraid to make mistakes. I'm sure you throw those out. And yeah, if I could come away with one or two images from a from a, an expedition or, or time out outdoors that it's wor- worth putting on the wall, I, I feel pretty good about that. Is that right? Uh-huh. If I just get one. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So because every picture is not to be savored not necessarily so yeah what is it that makes a good picture mm-hmm. and I have three C's that I use to evaluate it's communication composition and craftsmanship you teach that too don't you to, yeah to students yeah the communication component yeah what are they what does it say why are you taking the picture why are you a photographer to start out with you know, what are you passionate about? Mm-hmm. And what is this intent of this image supposed to convey? Okay, so communication, so important. And then the composition, what makes it look good? <laughs> the wow factor, you know, the principles of design, the balance, lighting, the, lighting. Yeah, lighting, the color. Uh-huh. Value, uh-huh. values, contrast. Um, direction of the eye, all those kinds of things. And then the craftsmanship, the last part is, you know, how your camera works, uh, getting good exposures, being able to have your camera do what you want it to do. Uh, There's a lot of, I won't get into a lot of the technical stuff, but that technical part is the easiest thing to learn. I mean, it takes a while to learn it. Yeah. F-stops and shutter speeds and lighting. But once you get that down, it comes to you. I don't even think about that hardly mm-hmm. anymore. I mean, it's so when you take a picture of some scene, you kind of click through that three C's, don't you? Yeah. You know, what am I? Why am I taking it? What, okay. what would I like to take it for? What do I want to communicate? Yeah. In I taking will, it, I will go to a place and not just pull my tripod out, set up my camera, and take the first shot I want. Yeah. I see. I'm. I'm. I'm exploring. I'm experiencing i'm wanting to be part of the environment and have an emotional response what am i drawn to in this Mm -hmm. is it the waterfall over there or is it the stream you know the the rocks or whatever something that draws my interest and then i'll i'll just spend time with that so that's where you focus that's where you yeah i know i'm gonna i'm gonna say something about this and then i go into the composition part what am i what does the frame look like? What are the edges? What's distract? What's pulling my eye into the, the subject? You want to have a simple subject that makes sense. You don't want to have a lot of different things going on. Sometimes it gets too busy. Yeah. You don't know what you're trying to say. So walking around, you know, putting different lens choices, low angle point of view, you know, all the different compositional things that might work and then looking at the lighting is it backlit front lit side lit these things just go through your mind automatically i mean i'm not checking off a list 
You might have to when do. When you start, you do that. You might have to do that. Yeah. But um, because I've been doing it in graphic design so many years, it's it's sort of natural for me. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, you can learn that. And then the craftsman part. Okay. Do I want depth of field? Do I want focus all the way through? Do I want it to be shallow and out of focus in the background? That's a, an aperture choice. So to take a picture <laughs> is like an hour of preparation. Well, <laughs> it actually happens pretty quick. Well, because you're experienced. Yeah. <laughs> but, but for somebody who's starting out and not experienced, I gather there is kind of a checklist. And yes. You, and it does take time, and you have to deliberate. Yeah, I mean, like when you're a camera, you know, you got to check. It's good to check what ISO I have. But take that picture that's on the screen there. Uh, what were you trying to communicate there? What was, what oh, was that your one, point? That one there, I was um, in Dana Point, and I, I wanted to express the smoothness of the water. I wanted to change the water with a, a neutral density film. I, mean, I, I did a five-minute exposure on that picture. Oh, where, really? Uh -huh. where the water moving, moving. so much sure. turned to a milky kind of ethereal looking thing. And then the clouds move over five minutes. So everything is kind of mysterious, and yet the rocks are sharp, and they're, they're still. They're not moving. Mm -hmm. So that was a fun thing to just play around with. So how long did it take you to prepare yourself to actually snap the well, shot. I walked around uh, the area uh, um, on a jetty. I was different points of view, what I want in the foreground. You know, it took me a while to figure that out. But then I was losing light, so sun's oh. going down. Yeah, because the sun. Yeah, I got to make sure. a decision here. Yeah, that's always the problem. <laughs> but um, I actually we went to Dana Point uh, specifically for a project for one of my clients wanted. Uh, photographs of, of the beach and so we went to Laguna Beach, Corona Del Mar um, uh, Newport Beach and I scouted most of the day I knew all the images I was going to make uh -huh. at dusk and so I was prepared yeah. and I, like I said I only come home with one good image <laughs> <laughs> but that's kind of an, uh, an interesting idea that it takes you that long to take a picture you know time. usually you kind of go to a spot you see something you snap, snap a picture and you go your way yeah you know, you've done the whole thing within a matter of 12 seconds yeah well hunt, hunting terms are used in photography like shoot capture <laughs> i like yes. to use the word make mm -hmm. it takes time yes it does to make a to good make something image. yeah so yeah it takes a lot of time, you know, to really get something you're proud of. Um, so to be a photographer, I'm getting the feeling that you've got to be a person that has patience, you know, that has a degree of tolerance, that can wait or that can <laughs> hold and not act and just wait for your moment. Uh, yeah, I mean, is that a... That's true. Because is that a personal characteristic of a, a, lot of your it, a good photographer? A lot of your pictures are at dusk or in the early morning. The light is more dramatic, it's colorful and all that. So mm -hmm. if you're waiting for a couple hours, well, the first time I photographed um, Horsetail Falls. Horsetail Falls is what looks like the fire falls in Yosemite. Yes, yes. And um, the first time I photographed that, I knew that Galen Rowell, another photographer, he was the first one to photograph that. And I'd seen some images online of it, but there wasn't a lot of information on where he took the picture. So I. I was exploring most of the day, just finding out a point of view. I knew where the yes. the place was. So finally came to a little place along the, along the river that had a lot of tripod holes in the snow. <laughs> and I knew there before. were a lot of photographers there. Yeah. <laughs> so I was the only one there, and it was probably about 1 o'clock. And it doesn't happen until 5.30. So I waited there for four hours. By the time 5.30 came around, there were 50 or 60 other photographers that right? overlapping our tripod legs, everything. I mean, it was crazy. It was fun, in a sense, because everybody was excited and talking and learning about each other sure, and all sure. that. 
And then at 5.30, the, the glow starts coming up from the bottom, and everybody gets quiet, you know, and it's shutters going off. You can hear these clicks. Nobody's talking. <laughs> <laughs> and it only lasts for like five minutes. It's, it's, you know, and you get that glow, and, and everybody at the end, they just start whistling and cheering, and it was so exciting. 50 pictures, but everyone different. Well, yeah. Everyone just Probably a little different. Probably very similar. Yes. But, uh, yeah, I photographed that about three times. But it's such a crowd now. You have to get a, I think you have to get a permit. to. You have to walk about a mile. I remember a lecture I attended on Ansel Adams. Mm -hmm. And I remember that was part of his strategy, that he would go to a mountain area, park, basically, yeah. sit there all day, and wait for sunset. And then he got the picture at the moment that he wanted it. Yeah, you're ready to go. But you had to be wait for the sun to come and show up. And sometimes it did, and sometimes it didn't. Yeah, sometimes I you mean, go home. Like cloud formations, you know, a lot of different things. Yeah. And again, that's what you're talking about. Yeah, you, sometimes you don't get it, but uh, it takes work. You know, it's, you know, you could say, oh, I could have taken that picture. Well, why didn't you? Yeah. It, you have to go out and do it. You know, you have to spend the time... A lot of it's being there at the right time, and it takes effort, you know. So why do that? I mean, why would somebody like you or anybody else, you know, do that? I mean, it's well, not like going fishing in the morning <laughs> and just kind of waiting all day for the fish to show up. That's the same I mean, thing. why would you do that? I mean, we, when there are a lot of other things you can do. Now, okay, I gather, you know, well, you do it for income. You're, you're a commercial artist. You do it yeah, for income. But it's more a, a, a personal satisfaction you get a, a, a joy from seeing that glory in that moment and from being there and experiencing it. I mean, it's just, for me, that turns me on. Is that right? I, I love being outdoors. You and know, in psychology, we have this term, the aha experience. Yeah. That's when you kind of understand something. And when you kind of, you got the idea, you got the perception of it, you, you, you connected with it. You know what you're doing now talking about. Aha, I got it. Yeah. I guess that's what you're talking about. That's right. It's the same thing. Yeah. And if, if you don't get a good picture, you had a good experience there anyway, you know. But if you do, then you've got something to share with people. And it's fun to look at, you know, on the wall. And, you know, I, I do sell them. So it is nice to see your images around town and sure. so forth. Yeah, I bought your art. <laughs> yeah, you bought the, um, yeah. the church in Yosemite. Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah, a little small church, a little church. big background. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if he has that image you can show. Yeah, if he does, no, that'd be good to, but to put on a, there. Yeah. It's a vertical. Yeah. Um, but are, but do you have a, um, a, a, a favorite type of picture that you are just known for? You know, I don't know if I have a, a certain subject i mean it's landscape yeah, yeah like a subject or like a topic um, or i do a lot of the valley mm -hmm. you know the agricultural stuff uh, i love you know the different seasons so i have a lot of images that are about us here yeah um, do you think most, that would be true of any artist uh photographer or otherwise that there are these real unique times or places or types of art that is just that's just you that's where your heart is yeah other stuff you just do for practical reasons but yeah well i love the mountains so i probably would be drawn to the sierra yeah yeah there's the image it's it has a Tell little us about that that's that's uh yosemite yeah um it's two places of worship uh-huh <laughs> the big worship the big cathedral of nature and the small man-made place of worship. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I look at the big one and I go, wow, that's where, that's where I can probably worship better, you know. But I, I used a long telephoto lens quite a ways away. It was probably a uh, hundred yards away from the church. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to get that contrast Mm -hmm. between the only colorful thing and a monochromatic background plus all that height 
I don't show any sky in that image because it could go on for another. <laughs> oh, yeah, you could have a third <laughs> yeah. element of worship, sure. But, um, yeah, so that that's the story on that. It's um, That's the piece of art that I bought, by the way. Yep. And we have it hanging in our home. It's, it's, it's caught a lot of attention. You know, as people yeah. come and go and people go, it's caught a lot of attention. Yeah. It's very stark. It's very, very uh, profound. I've sold quite a few of those to people that got married in that church. Yes, yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. It's a connection with them, yes. like you said. Yeah. It means something to, to the person looking yeah, at it. Yeah, it's a place it. that, you know, something happened in your life and yeah. a life-changing event. Right. And you want to memorialize that in some way. Yeah. So. Is it better, though, for me to go and take that picture and produce it and hang it on my wall? Or is it better for me to buy a piece of art from a well-known well, artist and photographer and who's done it right and who's done it you know what had excellent quality well, Does it make a difference if you aspire to make a picture of that I would do it um, a lot of people will uh, copy other images they look at other artists other photographers and they can learn a lot from from really analyzing what they've done mm -hmm. um, and so that's a good way to learn is observing other artists photographers and um, but you eventually want to be true to yourself yeah you, you know although being new and being cutting edge or whatever is really something that five years from now is going to be old hat yeah so why why do that why do that you have to be authentic mm -hmm. about what you like and why you take the picture I, authenticity yeah. is really important um, so well, let me come back to something you said a little while ago, and then we'll take a break. But uh, you talked about communication being a very key issue. You know, having uh, a purpose or a meaning for taking doing something. Of those three C's that you mentioned, which is the more important? Is it more important to have the technology, the camera, uh, uh, up to snuff? Is that really the important thing? No. Or is it to have the subject of? It's a, uh, yeah, it's the expression expression the communication part is the number one part I think and then composition is really critical too I mean what makes it look good because if people are drawn to something they don't know why but what is it about that composition that you like not all you know are the same but yeah out of those three communication number one uh -huh. composition two and then the technical part is something that you will learn and will take some time and effort to do, but you're always learning how to communicate. Mm -hmm. I mean, technology can change, so cameras learning about technical stuff changes, but uh, you can get by with not knowing that part as sure. much. I mean, I'm not saying it's not important. Well, it's a cost factor, too, and I would imagine, you know, high technology is an expensive issue oh, so geez. maybe you can't do it maybe you have to stay in your cell phone camera maybe that what you have to yeah. do but the other two factors are very important that it, that depends on your uh, learning and or your patience and yes um, like I said observing other photographers what you know maybe take a piece of tracing paper or you know something you can see through and draw some lines on major parts of his picture what you know what is the subject of it can you identify the subject right away um, is there anything that leads you to the subject are there any distractions on the outside edges that need to be eliminated or you know that bother you um, the value structure not values are black white and gray okay you uh -huh. got I'll just say three there's basically Ansel Adams had ten yeah. but just simplify it, black, white, and gray. If you, if you have them all equal, it's kind of boring. I mean, if you look at a scene, your subject should be the smallest value. Let's say if you had a dark sky, uh, it's night, and, well, the moon is going to be bright, okay? Sure. But it's going to be small up there. That'll be your subject, okay? Okay. Um, if, and I have an example in there. Um, okay. I teach this, this image here. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. It's simple. It's a, some trees. But I break it down into highlight, yes. shadow, yes. and midtone. Mm -hmm. And the highlight is the smallest value, mm -hmm. which creates the subject. Uh, <laughs> yes, yeah, it you stands out. So yeah. it's a contrast thing. Yeah. And this, this gets more difficult to see when you're out there. You want to show your subject as the smallest value. It can be the opposite. It can be the darkest mm -hmm. thing in the picture and a bright. Like I have this picture of um, uh, Bryce Canyon that it's got this, it's a black and white, a lot of hoodoos sticking up and they're all kind of monochromatic light values. Mm -hmm. And then there's this one pine tree that's dark sticking up. And that was your... And that's the subject. That's your target. That's the target right there. <laughs> so if you can get them unequal, not all the same values, then you, you can isolate the subject better. Um, that's a great lesson. Yeah. I mean, anybody can do that. And, and the contrast, that's a contrast issue. Also, you do it with color. If you know anything about a color wheel, opposite colors mm -hmm. um, play off each other, like red and green blue and orange, yellow, purple. And so in nature, you see a lot of, of uh, orange and blue because you've got sunset and sky and you know green and, or, uh, green and red works too. But so a lot of blue and orange works. Uh, and so you use contrast with color as well as values. Another, another contrast thing is um, old and new, sure. young and old, rough sure. and smooth. Any story has a conflict resolution or, you know, has a contrast. Mm -hmm. So contrast... You big, small, you have har harsh, yeah. soft, white, dark. Yeah, so it's going to be yeah. more emotional or you connect with it um, a little more story. Uh -huh. Do you, you can use metaphor. You can, you can actually just have, like I was saying, that you can have a noun. You're describing something that you really like. Okay, this mm -hmm. flower. Mm -hmm. My dog. <laughs> yeah. It's a noun. But, you know, you might have some adjectives in there. Mm -hmm. uh, you see, the like, difference is you're, a, you're an artist, so you might see the large, small, new, old, that I, I'm a psychologist. I would look at that and sense and say, what's the emotion with that? Yeah. I mean, it's an anger. <laughs> Yeah. You know, is it calm? Is That's it peace? Good. Yes. I mean, is it? I mean, I would. I mean, that could be contrast too. That is. Uh, but I mean, I would put the world in kind of a, a spin of okay, emotion so experience. How would you describe that visually? Um, you know. Okay. Yeah, anger is much more dark, if you will. Right. Yeah, peace and calm is much more light. If you just, you know, begin to identify, how would you do that? Yes. Yeah. How would I say I'm suffering from depression, isolation? That's right. Darkness. Yeah. Um, and then what do I want to show the contrast? Or where, when I was depressed, yeah. and now that I've gone through my therapy, my treatment, I'm less depressed, I'm now whole again. It might be hard to do that. There's a contrast. Hard to do that in one image. You could do it in more than one. Maybe a series of yes. shots or whatever. And people do that. Yeah, I, I saw an exhibit at... Uh, uh, I think it was at Fresno Art Museum. I mean, it was at Chris Sorensen's gallery here, where the 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 photographer and his wife he was dying of cancer, and they were documenting his journey through. I that. saw that uh, display. Yes. Oh man, that was powerful. Yeah. That was very powerful. But to say it in one, I mean, like he was carrying a suitcase. I'll never forget that image, mm -hmm. and everything was just falling out of the suitcase as he was walking down the road, leaving yeah. it all behind. Yeah. You know, so those kinds of stories, more psychology or emotional. So art really, photography is really a storytelling process. A picture is worth a thousand words. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's truth to that idea. Yeah. You put the thousand words in. That's the point, right? Right. I mean, that's, that's your job. Your job is to pre present the option or the opportunity. It's my job to put the words into it. See, I like to say, is there a one word that's worth a thousand pictures. Well, that could be and true. And I think that word is glory. Is that right? I do. Uh-huh. I mean, 
Yeah, I can see glory, glorify, glory. The whole earth is full of his yeah, glory. Yeah, so the, uh, all the ways that that could be displayed. And oh, endless. It just, it's endless. Endless. It may be a simple view, uh, but it turns me on. <laughs> Let's take a break here for a minute. Okay. When we come back, I want you to just comment a little bit about uh, photography in the family. Um, every parent would like to at least expose their kids to the opportunity to take pictures and maybe consider photography as an interest or as a hobby or who knows, maybe something more than that. Um, so maybe you can comment a little bit about that in terms of what does a mother, what does a father do when uh, a kid shows some interest or ability in photography? How would a family and a parent foster that and develop that in a kid? Let's talk about that when we get back. Okay, see you in a minute. Get a cup of coffee and thanks for joining us up to now. dentist who has a passion for superior aesthetics and comfort. You need Dr. Christopher Wong with Cedar North Dental. Call 559-432-4948 or visit cedarnorthdental.com. Hey! At Boys and Girls Clubs, it's not just about trying new things. Kitchen in my hometown. It's not about learning the right steps Four. or making contact. Five, six, seven, eight. It's not about exploring the future. It's about helping them build it. It's about taking steps to greatness, about making a connection. It's about proving every kid and teen has what it takes. <laughs> It's about people in our clubs who bring out the greatness in every kid who enters our doors. It's not just about being on stage. It's about walking across it. Great futures start here, and here, and here. Sat7 is a Christian media network that uses uncensored satellite television to broadcast across the Middle East and North Africa and is also available globally online.
The Green Gables Care Home is a 24-hour assisted living facility for the elderly located in Clovis, California, offering spacious private and semi-private rooms which are wheelchair approved, catering to the special person in your life who needs attention and wants to live in a loving home environment. The Green Gables Care Home has assisted living in secured homes for elderly with Alzheimer's, memory loss, and for your loved ones needing assistance with their activities of daily living. Call 559-297-9438 and visit GreenGablesCareHome.com. Teach Me to Parent, we're looking at the issue of photography and how that can not only enrich your life personally and how you can use photography to open some doors and perhaps even enter into a career. But photography can be part of family life. It can enrich family life. It can strengthen family life. It can bring families together. It can give something for a family to focus on and do together and enjoy together and appreciate together and support each other. Paul, how do we do that? How, do, how does um, family make uh, good use of photography? Uh, I have a good example of uh-huh. um, my three, my two nephews and niece. Um, their family just had a special project that they did. Um, well, actually, each one did an individual thing. Uh, the 12, 12 year old went to a race car thing that was what he wanted to do they asked the kids what would you like to do as a special trip with dad or mom you know and one said i want to go to washington dc so eric just got back from washington with his son anthony and they uh, took lots of pictures Uh Um, another photographer was there andrew shin they met up with andrew he used to um, be a photographer here in reedley anyway they shared some time but then the niece she wanted to learn how to ride a horse and so autumn said well let's document this experience (laughs) and uh, you can tell a little story and create a little video about it well they were all still photos but so she had to come up with a storyline what do you what is what do you need to know about riding a horse so they asked the expert at the riding stable what you need to know about riding a horse. And the guy says, well, don't ever get behind, don't ever get on the backside of a horse. Yeah, that's right. That's first. <laughs> you always mount them on the what, uh, left side or left right side. side. So she, she says this stuff. And then they take pictures of the, you know, the guy that's in head of the cowboy there. And, and then they have pictures of her on the horse. And she's putting this story together. Uh-huh. And what an experience that mom and her had together learning how to ride a horse, but they, they made it a creative I exercise. Like that. Yeah. It's more than just the kids standing at the horse and taking a picture and be able to say, oh, I rode this horse. Yeah. There was a but story. The story of it coming together, it happening. And then she shared that with, with my wife and I, I said, wow, this is great. You know, <laughs> she had so much fun. Um, Anthony in Washington, you know, I, he's got pictures of his vacation. So, I mean, that's, that's something you do as a family when you go to a special place. You can document that. Um, so it's good to kind of take pictures in a, in a documentary format of, from the beginning to the end or from something that's important to maybe less important or very little important to great important. I mean, some kind of a sequence or yeah. transitional. Yeah, tell the story. Like Tell the story. Yeah, from the beginning That's to the, the end. That's the communication. Yeah. That's the communication part of your three C's. Yeah. Um, let me think. Oh, yeah. Um, one thing I did with some kids um, with Youth for Christ. Yeah, tell that story. That's a um, great story. We uh, were fortunate to be able to use the facility on Divisadero downtown, and we had a bunch of kids that would like to come in and use their computers and and um, so one, I think it was one day every two weeks we would get together and we would do a little photo club. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. And so I was having, we got a bunch of cameras donated and each kid had a camera. 
and we would go out and walk downtown trying to capture certain stories. So I would give them projects like, um, I want you to find something beautiful next to something that is maybe not so beautiful. Well, that's that contrast that yeah. you were talking about. Yeah. So like it could have been cracked asphalt with a little flower coming up out of it, you know, or something like that. Um, how architectural things, you know, the um, beautiful home with a lot of trash around it or something, you know, that was kind of a negative but a yeah. positive, you know, what can we do to change You're teaching more than just taking pictures. You're yeah. teaching how to look at the world, yes. how to see the world. Yeah, so we did that. Um, other project, we went to um, Harris Ranch, the horses, and we got to photograph some horses uh -huh. um, in the river out there. Uh, we went to Woodward Park and walked around and did things there. But then after they got the pictures, they would process them on the computers. We'd show them a little bit of how to do that. And then I made prints for them that were 18 by 24 prints, framed them. And at that time, I had a studio a gallery in uh, downtown, the Broadway Studios. And we did a show for the kids. And it was so fun. We had probably 20, 25 images on display. The kids came with their parents, got all dressed up. <laughs> it was quite, a, quite an exciting thing for the kids. And um, we had probably three or 400 people come through on Art Hop that day. And it was just really special to see those kids being proud of what they had done, sharing it with their parents, uh -huh. and uh, all these people coming through. So, so. maybe a, a family can capture that idea, that if you want to open the door of photography to your kids, yeah, yeah create a, a storyline you know, of, of something to do and make it into a, a project so that it's not just taking a picture, yeah. but that there's a whole process that goes on. And you don't overdo it. You don't want to overkill. No. But you can be intentional, you know, whatever. The thing is to find what your kids are passionate about. You know, if they're, if they're passionate about reading or cooking or sports or, uh, pl you know, playing with their friends or their pets, um, they're driven to that. I would direct their photography towards something that they love to do because they're going to be doing better images with stuff that they really like. Yes, yes, yes. Um, yeah. So if it's sports, you know, take pictures of their friends playing soccer or action stuff, all kinds of different stories there. Um, if they love cooking, you know, maybe some stuff, yeah. having fun with mom cooking. Kind of make it a fun project. Yeah. I mean, that would be a principle of family life is to don't make it into a project, but make it into a fun activity, yeah. which then may open the door and they become much more serious. Right. And Yeah, so if you find something they like, mm -hmm. they're more apt to want to get involved. you think involved. that kids need a parent to do it with them as um, compared to something it, they do on their own? Or I think it's good to have that relationship going. Um, you want to be encouraging. You want to be affirming them. Yes. Uh, let them make some mistakes. Look at it as play. Creativity is really playing. You take a step, you find out the next thing you want to do with your idea, and you kind of step out into the unknown. So you're discovering things as you go. So you can't judge right away. You want to let them explore and have fun. What happens if I do this? What happens if I try that? Just have fun, because the parent becomes a coach in a way. Yeah, but uh, but and a cheerleader also. I mean, it, it plays that role. Yeah, let the yeah. kid do the photography, but right, you got to play that role of support and encouragement and direction and. Yeah, it's a time for you to affirm them. I see that as a great opportunity for kids and parents to connect. Yeah. Even if it doesn't go into a career in photography right, right. or ever really develop much, it's a time in your life as a family where you connect. Yeah, you can talk about it. it allows about you, it brings you together. That's great. I love that. And if, if parents can do that, you... <laughs> well, I took my daughter, Ellie, Ellie Colleen, now, 
uh, to Kings Canyon one time, mm -hmm. and we sat there and we gave gave her some photo instruction. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> we had the best time. Uh, we were just camping together for, for a couple of days, and so we we explored Kings Canyon and we did some photography. She ended up being um, uh, in a program, Joshua Wilderness Institute at Hume Lake for a year, and she then worked at Hume Lake as a uh, market in the marketing department and was as a photographer. Well, in high school, she also was on the editorial um, newspaper, and she was. I think the teacher knew that I was a photographer, so she, he, he gave her that assignment to take pictures for the, sure. <laughs> for the, sure, the thing. Sure. At least she had have a camera. <laughs> <laughs> so she fell in love with photography through my influence, through the school, the teacher, and Absolutely. through Hume Lake, and she started seeing herself loving to do that. So that was her beginning. And uh, then she came to work for me, and now she's on her own, making a lot more money than I do. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as a psychologist, I've thought this idea that for kids, and stay with kids, but it could be adults too, who are not very social, don't have very many friends, uh, maybe autistic in their personality structures, uh, getting a camera is like a friend. Yeah. It can be a friend. Yeah. So you bring into the child's life a friend. So that kid now has something that he can do with somebody, camera, yeah. Yeah. and not be alone. It yeah. reduces loneliness. Oh, yeah. Now you move that forward into a young adult. You could travel. If you're going to travel alone, it's better to travel with a camera. People <laughs> ask questions. You talk. You interact with people like you were telling about the pictures at the, the creek. I mean, oh, you know, yeah. it brings you into a world of people. Yeah. Yeah. Is there some truth to that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I can remember. I mean, when I'm outdoors, especially in more popular places that are photographed a lot, you're going to run into other photographers. And you have conversations. And you have conversations. And, you know, you have a camaraderie and enjoy of the same kind of thing. Um, they're, all the... Uh, the barriers go down. You know, there might be a little competition, but you know, you don't think yeah. about that. No, when you're there, but it's okay because that's part <laughs> of life. Unless the guy and... stands right in front of you. <laughs> Excuse me, that's sir. Part of life is part of the experience, and it's, yeah. it's all right. But yeah. I've always thought that you know, a camera is a good thing for certain people, even if they don't take you know wonderful pictures. I mean, that's not a quality issue necessarily, but it's an opportunity to get you out of your home and get you out of yourself and. Yeah, connect you with people and, and and I think it's kind of like a sport you know you can do that but it is a sport <laughs> sometimes you have to run well to I, get I the hadn't picture. thought about it in that context because I have be been true. and I knew the light you know like you, like you see a rainbow mm -hmm. and you know that thing's not going to be there forever you yeah. know and the way that works is the sun has to be behind you lower like 40 degrees or low yeah. and then it has to be moisture in the air so I mean you always look away from the sun. And I saw this beautiful rainbow over on the east side of the Sierras, and it was just so vivid and everything. I, I, I got to find something to put in that picture. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm driving and I'm pulling off the road, and, and I see this tree over here, and I said, Oh, there's, I got to, so I'm running over there. So it's a sport. Mm -hmm. You know, you're running and you, you end up getting the composition, but yeah, things can happen very quick, and so you might have to work. What has faster. photography done to you? Well, what has it's it done to your marriage? What uh, has it done to your family? <laughs> uh, well, it's like I said, play a major role in your life in some way. So, well, like like I said, my kids, two of them are photographers. All of, all of my kids are entrepreneurs. They all have their own businesses. Um, I think they learned that from me. I've always been independent, pretty much. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, my wife and I, we work together in the business. She does a lot of criticism of my work and critiquing. Uh -huh. well. <laughs> it's good to have an honest opinion. Well, uh, you said that right in the beginning. <laughs> you know, I respect her An opinion. artist needs somebody to be yeah. an evaluator and give you feedback. And she, has, she does a lot of succulent arrangements, and she is... 
uh, selling on, online a lot. So she takes pictures of her arrangements, posts them, and people respond and, and buy them. So it's a business uh, thing as well as, you know, a family activity. Mm -hmm. um, that's one thing that I love about my landscape thing. It's not so much a business. I do a lot of commercial work food photography, architectural photography, people photography, advertising and marketing. I work with a lot of ad agencies, so it's it's business. But when I do my landscape stuff, that's a little more expressive of who I am. Take a minute. Okay. What do you want to tell kids watching this today? Oh, man. You got a kid out there who's 14 years of age and 16. What do you want to tell them? Well, first of all, you got to have fun doing it. And if you enjoy this, you could make a career out of it. Happened to me. It happened to my kids. And more than just a career, you can have a lot of fun and enjoy seeing things a little more creatively, seeing with your heart, not just your physical eyes, but you can see with your emotions. And you can express who you are. You can have your friend with you, like Alan said. Um, it's been really rewarding for me all the years I've been doing it. I'm getting pretty old. I've been doing it a long time. I still love it. And to do a job that you love, it's not like going to work. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Makes a big difference if you That's right. if you love something and you do it as your career, you'll never go to work. <laughs> but then, you know, so I would encourage you um, learn about it. Do it. Doing it is probably more important. If you want to develop a career, you have to have a portfolio of work. You have to show the images that you've made. Uh, and usually you have to have a focus on a certain type of photography that you want to do. If it's weddings, mm -hmm. then it's going to have to be about weddings. People, portraits, it's got to be people. You gotta start somewhere. You got to you you start. Gotta start building a portfolio, and yeah, at a young age, you probably don't know exactly what where it's going to go. No. Uh, so, try all kinds of different things. But I would say what you love to do, what you want to do more of, what really gets you excited, do that. Good. Good. Yeah. Well said. Let me end with a quote. Okay. Uh, here's the quote that ends. It puts it in perspective here at the end. Happiness grows among our hobbies, you know, and if you have a hobby, you know, within that, you find happiness. You, you can find happiness. You can find a level of happiness, but you can also find opportunity. Yeah. You can also find people and connections and relationships. So start with the hobby. Yeah. Make it a hobby and then enjoy it and go from there. Hey, thanks for joining us today. Dr. Teach Me to Parent. Mr. Paul Mullins, Fresno commercial artist. His website there is on the screen in front of you. You can connect with him if you'd like to. And um, thanks for joining us, and bye for now. The in-house services we offer here at Total Life Change, anger management, one-on-one -on -one biblical counseling. We do a marriage enrichment, codependency and chemical dependency one-on-one -on -one counseling. We have a relapse prevention piece. We also do a lot of workshops where we inform and educate people on different topics. There is one-on-one -on -one individual sessions and we also have group therapy that uh, we work in a group. We find that can be so advantageous when you know you're not alone. The key is to call email online and uh, get a hold of one of the receptionists here and we will do an assessment. We are not here to direct, guide, and force. We're here to meet you where you're at, then direct, then guide, and then give you options to break free.